Hello, in this video, I'm gonna help you prepare for the Business Administration Specialist Super Badge. If you're like me, when you first looked at the Super Badge, you felt like, But don't worry, in this video I'm going to break down all of the information that comes up in the Super Badge into user stories and tasks. I have explained user stories and tasks before in my two other Super Badge videos, both on Security Specialist and the Reports and Dashboards Specialist one. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. A user story is a way of describing who your target audience is, what you want to do for that audience, and why you want to do it. And then the tasks are all the things that go along with that to make it happen. And by the way, if you're at this point in your setting to become a Salesforce administrator, I highly recommend you set up a blog. I talked about this extensively in my previous video about the importance of having a blog. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Creating a blog is just a great way of doing some extra work so you practice all of the things that you've learned and being able to show a prospective employer and yourself that you're capable of doing all of this stuff. The Business Administration Specialist use case that we're going to be doing is Ursa Major Solar is this company and it expands into residential sales up until this point. They've just been in a different market. I'm just gonna run through this part really fast. There's the stakeholders, the standard objects, the setup that you've gotta do. That's all part of, this now becomes part of challenge two. Okay, so here you're gonna fix and import data. You've been sent a list of accounts. You need to clean them up and then import them. Okay, you're gonna then also, as part of challenge two, add a residential to the account objects field type. And that's it for the challenge two. For challenge three, we now get into the user management. So you're gonna be removing duplicates. You're gonna be adding a user to focus on data quality. And then there's these notes here about how to actually go about creating each of these users. If you've been following the trail mix, at this point, creating user accounts and stuff like that should be pretty straightforward. This is the guidelines that they give you how to do it. Of course, you don't actually have to create these sorts of emails. Like they're not checking that. Okay, and then you just go through this. Okay, in the description, this is really basically telling you what sort of license they need to have. In case you didn't know, there's two types of Spanish. There's Spanish, European Spanish, and Latin American Spanish. I don't remember if it said Latin American or Mexican, but anyhow, there's two different types of Spanish, and just make sure you look out for that. So you're gonna be adding, there's a language preference that Maria added. When it says Maria added, that doesn't mean Maria added it. That means that was part of the package that you installed right into your trailhead playground. But you're gonna provide Sinjitashi access to the language preference field, follow through these things, name the solution you create for your extended access bilingual pilot. I can't tell you what the name is, but whenever they, whenever in trailhead, they wanna give you um, something to do, but they don't wanna tell you what it is, they'll just say solution, which is one of those business jargon words that I hear all the time and think. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I mean, a solution is like a mixture. It's like a liquid, but whatever. Going along, accounts by market. Here you're gonna be creating a folder called residential reports and you're gonna store the reports there and you're gonna set reports to display data for all accounts and create a dates for all time unless instructed otherwise. And then um, this is the accounts by market. How are you gonna go about doing this? Again, just sort of breaking this information into smaller chunks makes it easier to follow along with and easier to actually do. After you complete each report, go ahead and click check challenge. This is what I personally did. What's cool about this is that the super badge checks for the reports in the order that it lists it in the, in the challenge. So um, if you've got the first one there, it will then say, well, we're missing the second one. If you've got the first and the second one there, it will correct. It will say, well, we're missing the third one. So it's just, I like doing that to make sure that I'm not like doing like four reports and then going back and finding out that I messed up on one. Here's the high value residential report that you're gonna have to make. Um, my experience was, is I did have to add fields to this report, but it, again, it depends on which report type you start with. For rated accounts by state, it says to give the residential sales team a better idea of which territories to focus on. Gabriella requests that you create a matrix report, rated accounts by state of residential accounts with ratings and columns and billing states, provinces, rows. And then, yeah, so when starting to create groups, on the matrix report, you first need to add rows, then columns. So here, I think the order might have to be reversed in the way that they actually tell it to you. 
but something to keep in mind. Then you have to create the open support cases report. And now onto the residential dashboards. So you're gonna create a new folder called residential dashboards. And then here, you're gonna create the team scoreboard dashboard based off of these requirements. And it's gonna include uh, these types of components. So this is really nice as far as things go because it tells you the source report, which for the lightning reports and dashboards super bad, you just, you know, you sort of had to figure that out. So this is a bit of a, of a nice piece here that they give you this extra bit of information. And then you're gonna create the rep scoreboard dashboard. And these are the components that you're gonna to have to include on it. All of this is all part of challenge four. Do make sure that you refresh the dashboards before you finish and check the challenge because sometimes it doesn't work because you didn't just refresh them. So make sure you refresh the dashboards. Okay, challenge five. Okay, so for the fifth challenge, you're going to configure reusable emails. Um, so basically you're gonna make an email signature and set up two pre-configured emails for the team. That's the email signature, straightforward. One thing that was confusing to me a little bit was where to add this email signature. And um, this document, this help doc helped me, set me on the right track. I've linked to it in the description below. So you could check out add email signature in Salesforce. Okay, then for this, to actually make the letterhead and welcome email, you actually first, um, I think you've, if I recall correctly, you first need to make the storage location um, first and then create the letterhead and the email. Um, this document, create email template folder and lightning experience was helpful to me in giving me the instructions on how to do that. Then there's the standard correspondence email and that's gonna be it for challenge five. The sixth part gets to platform capabilities. So here, the residential sales team needs a subset of customer information to focus on, a specific business life cycle there's nothing in Salesforce called a business life cycle, so it's something different. Built on the opportunity object and a way to differentiate whether the opportunity is residential or utility. So I'm just gonna point out that this help document create multiple business processes, had some good information for me, create page layouts, came in handy, compact layouts was helpful, and of course, record types. And then this is all of the information that you actually have to go through. So if you think of the life cycle name, you know, they're using, it's, it's sort of frustrating because I just call it what it is, but they don't want to call it what it is because they want you to know that a business life cycle is uh, something else, so. Okay, one thing I want to mention about this slide before we move on is I messed up with this. Um, and I, when I was doing it, I created it in the wrong order. And then once I did that, even though I had removed all of the things that I was supposed to remove from the thing, um, I still, it still was saying that it wasn't checking out correctly. Uh, what I ended up doing is I ended up having to create a new Trailhead Playground, install the package into that Trailhead Playground, check the challenge against that Trailhead playground and then was able to finish it so just fyi if if you run into this order if this problem when you're doing this and you get stuck on this page uh basically if you, i think if you have residential opportunities in the wrong place it it confuses the checker or something i don't know okay this is actually part of seven i'm sorry i got the number six here but this should be seven residential sales team is getting up and running they need a collaboration place residential sales product collaboration of course it's interesting now that salesforce has bought slack to think about i mean how how collaboration is going to work, you know, um, and is this still going to be part of how things go forward in the future in terms of what they teach people? I don't know. One thing I recommend doing, just, just be sure to read through this whole thing before you start going through the steps here, you know, and, and making this happen. Because um, like the description, the way, if you notice the way that I wrote it in here, I reordered the steps so it more closely is in sync with how you actually have to go through the process. So hopefully that helps you a little bit, but it's confusing. Okay, that's pretty much all of the background information that is included. And now it's just about about creating user stories, which I've created pretty generic user stories. But again, in my experiences is that in real life, a user story is usually something that it's gonna take
take a day or two or five or, 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 you know, to complete. So what I did in the security specialist super badge where I broke things down into really small user stories into very small steps, it's not really very realistic, but I did that because you're, you know, closer to the beginning of your journey and learning and developing your own confidence. But now that you're further into it, I wanted to make these more realistic for what a user story actually looks like. So user story, as a business, I want accurate customer data so that we could expand into new regions. Like this is just part of what we're doing here. So we have to have important new data so we can do that. Create users as a business. We want new sets of users. We're expanding new re regions. So we're standing up a new team. We gotta do that. So we're gonna create users. We wanna be able to offer different businesses uh, in different business in different languages because we're gonna be potentially expanding. So we're gonna create a field so we can do that. Create reports and dashboards. We wanna be able to analyze what's going on. We need templates so we're able to communicate effectively. And we need um, to create processes so we are able to now differentiate our different sales processes. If you're not, if you haven't worked inside of a business that does enterprise sales before, I do wanna just like, and I've talked a lot about this on my channel, but like selling to a business involves a lot of steps, like identifying the decision maker, um, making sure there's an executive sponsor, like all that sort of stuff, identify key decision makers that you don't have when you're doing residential, because if you're calling a homeowner and they own their house, they're the decision maker, you know what I mean? So like it, this is the ability for a sales force to differentiate between those two and set up those different processes is super powerful and really, really important. And finally, we're creating a space for collaboration and folks that is it that's pretty much it that is the business administration specialist super badge uh, the background documentation the user stories and tasks i wish you just a lot of success um, this has been an absolute pleasure for me to get to be a little part in your experience in studying salesforce and uh, launching hopefully what becomes a meaningful career for yourself if you have any questions please ask in the comment section below or if you'd like to connect to me on linkedin I'm happy to do that as well and be able to answer any questions that i can for you it has been an absolute pleasure getting to be a part of your journey learning Salesforce. Thanks so much for watching. You know, it's very strange. I have been in the Super business bad. so long. Now that it's over, I don't know what to do with the rest of my life. Have you ever considered admin certification? Make a wonderful Salesforce administrator.